Oh, let's go now. Hello. Hi. Okay, let's go, class. Let me start with amino acids. Primary structure. You know, there are four types of structure for amino acids, but we are required to discuss primary structure, okay? Um, primary structure. Are we good? Okay, let's go. Now, let me give you the structure of amino acids generally. Amino acid. Amino acid contains two things. Amine, an amino part, and an acid part. I've told you what amine, amine is. Any H2, do you remember? Yes. Okay. So, it contains an amine, any H2, and acid, which is COOH. Class, do you understand it? You can quickly produce this on your own. Amino acid. Amino acid. Now, we have different types of this one, two, three, remain one. Are you following me? Let me try and put this here on top. Any H2. Are you good? Okay, thank you. So, we are talking about amino acid. For those of us that are just turning in, please give me attention. We are talking about, about amino acid, which is amino, amine, and what? Acid. Okay? Now, there are different types of amino acid. We are not interested in that in this class. Depending on what will be the nature of the carbon chain here now. I hope you have understood this. All right. <clears throat> For me to explain to you the primary structure of amino acid, I will need to use two examples of amino acid for you. The one where here is this, two examples. The one where here is a CH3, the one where here is what? H. Are you following me now? Those are the two type of amino acid I'll be using to illustrate primary structure for you. But meanwhile, what is primary structure? Primary structure shows the type number the type of amino acid that is here how many are they are you getting me now the arrangement of the amino acids are we okay class the type their number and the arrangement that is the primary structure now watch me class just like carbohydrate and fat and, and fats, whenever components combine, water is also always lost, like I showed you in carbohydrates. The same thing with amino acid. Watch it now, watch it, you see it now. You're going to see something. This is the amino acid. NH2 is here. COOH is here. This is my CH3. I'm using my arrow now to the CH3. Are you following me now? This is glycine. Sorry, this is alanine. We are well interested in the name of the type of the amino acid now anyway. So do this for now. Are we okay? I'm combining with another amino acid glycine, which is given like this. Here will be H instead. This is my NH2, this is my COOH, and this is my H. Plus, what will happen here? This OH here with H from here will combine. So let me put this like this. Are you following? This H here with this OH here will combine and have what? Water. Yes or yes? God bless you. So, if these two combine, what am I left with? This CO will then combine with this AB. Class, watch. This CO will then combine with what? NH. Class, is it clear to us? Now, let me fix. Eh? It's not clear to you. OH is combined with H. What will you get? Eh? H2. What will remain now? C will then combine with what? Shall we understand this? This bond between them here is called peptide bond. It's called what class? In the case of carbohydrate, I told you it is glycosidic bond. This is how amino acids combine to form protein. This is the primary structure I'm illustrating, but I'm using only two amino acids here so that you understand it. Are you following me? If you don't understand this, you have problem with the hydrolysis that I'm explaining this. Okay, are we together, class? All right. 
So what are the things that are connected to these things now? What is connected to CO? We have a C carrying what? CH3, H, and NEH2. Yes or yes? What is connected to this NEH here? We have a C carrying a H, a H, and then a COOH. Yes or yes? That is how they continue to combine until you get a protein. Did you understand it? A protein. You on your own now, as you add there. This one, add it to this one again. Tell me the product. This one. Add CCH3, COOH, add it to this one. This one that I have here. Product. That is how they will continue to combine forming water until you get protein. How many amino acids do I have here? Two amino acids, Abby. Add the third amino acid. Give me the product. Can I rub off your class? Hmm? I didn't hear you. Hmm? I don't hear you. In beans. Yes, no, beans contain proteins. Beans contain carbohydrates. Every food, are you getting me now? Every food contains all this food. Are you getting it now? So beans contains protein. The reason why beans is considered a proteinous food is because it contains a higher percentage of protein than other class of food from the proximate analysis. Therefore, it's classified as a proteinous food. So beans contains protein. When it is hydrolyzed in our digestive system, Amino acid will not be produced from the protein. I will show you the hydrolysis. We are coming to that. Are we clear? What have we got? Are we good? Okay, now let's go. This is what you're supposed to get. There will be no H here. It would have combined with this OH here. It gives you water. Then these two will then bond. Yes or yes? Yes. Thank you. Are we clear? The OH from this place, this is COOH plus this is NEH2. Yes or yes? One H. From here, we'll combine with this OH here and form water, B. So, therefore, you'll be having this combined with this. Yes or yes? That's another glycosidic bond. Am I right? Okay, good. Noted? Okay. Noted? Okay. Noted? Okay. Look at this one. No. Come on, read it for me. Who knows if it is money? Are we together? Are we clear about this? Noted, okay. Now, I've only seen this so far. Okay, class, let's go. Class, let's go now. 
Now, class wash. Class wash. Normally, in an amino acid, an amino acid carries two charge. This same molecule you are seeing is having how many charge? Two charge. This molecule. Now watch. Please take note of this. So, this H from you know this is an acid. So this H of this one here will be released in the water. It will ionize. Here will now become negatively charged. Plus H plus yes or yes. See this is the base. That H plus will go and combine with this base here to give you NH3 plus. Class, do you understand? Are you clear? God bless you. Therefore, amino acids are said to be zuterion. They are said to be what? Zuterion. Meaning they are combination of they are combination of what? Plus and negative charge. Or they contain positive and negative charge. Is it clear to you? Or I write it now. Amino acid. Azuitrion, that is to say, contains both, both positive and negative charge. Shall we know the of Zuterion now? Yes. This is it now. They are Zuterion, meaning that they contain both positive and negative charge. In them, have you seen this kind of molecule in chemistry in science? It's only amino acids that behave like this. Now, I don't know. Are we good? Okay, so have we understand this so far? Let's go. Hydrolysis How are they hydrolyzed? Hydrolysis means addition of water to protein, addition of water to split proteins. Into amino acids. Are we there? Are we good? Please, you now understand the structure of protein I, I discussed now, I discussed now, and the amino acid I discussed now. Do you understand it? Very good, okay? Can I rub off? I can rub off? Yes. Okay. Now, next thing I will teach you about them is hydrolysis. When water, when water, yes, when water, don't worry. Have you written when water? No, it's just cancel. Let me go straight to the point. The hydrolysis of proteins, the hydrolysis of proteins. will produce amino acids, will produce amino acids. The hydrolysis of proteins will produce what class? Amino acid. Let me use, this is not a protein, no, but are you following me? I will assume it to be a protein. Are we together? Let me take the first case I give you. Any H2 into C into R, whatever be that, C O N H2. And then H, sorry, any H into C R O C O O H all over what? H, yes or yes? Is that the first case, are we? Are we together, class? God bless you. Now, if I'm adding water here, hydrolysis in the presence of an acid or base. Class, are we together? Please watch. This is going to yield amino acids. Are you watching me now, class? Okay. In this place where the bond is formed, please tell me, we have oxygen and nitrogen here sharing this bond. I want you to tell me, oxygen and nitrogen, which one is more electronegative? Which group is nitrogen? Atomic number seven, which group is nitrogen? Which group is oxygen? Group six. So which one will be more electronegative? Oxygen. I told you it increases across the group, sorry, across the period and decreases down the group. I think we have done periodicity here. So it will decrease, it will, are you following me? It will increase from, please pay attention, 
it will increase from group one to group two to group three, group four, group five, group six, group seven. So this should be more electronegative than this. Yes or yes, last. So therefore, this one carries negative charge and this carries a what? Negative charge. Any problem? Sorry. Sorry, class. Nitrogen is more electronegative than oxygen. Why? Ah. You marvel on now. You see, the chemistry of the periodic table is actually complex. The chemistry of periodic table you see is actually complex. Let me try and show you why. Class, are we together, class? Please give me attention. You will see why it is more electronegative than this. Can we go, class? Let's go. Nitrogen is nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Yes or yes? That's seven, isn't it? So, so these ones are close. You have one, two, three. Now wash oxygen. Wash oxygen. Oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Yes or yes? That's one, two, three, four. Yes or yes? Are we good? God bless you. Now, <laughs> are we good to go? When electrons, are we good? When electrons are filled singly and when one of them is doubled, which one will be more stable? When they are filled singly, is it not so? Why? Because all these things are electrons, electrons, electrons. Now I'm doubling, electron is doubled here. So therefore, oxygen will be easier. It will be easier for oxygen to lose electron than who? Than nitrogen because nitrogen is more stable. Are you following me? In that case, oxygen will be more electropositive than nitrogen. Are you following me? It will be high, more electropositive than what? Nitrogen. That means it will be less electronegative than what? Nitrogen. Because you don't win for electropositivity. It will really lose its electron to give a stable configuration. Are you following me now? So it will become less electronegative. And this one will be more electronegative. There is more to chemistry of the periodic table. We are only giving you the few we could give you. Are we together, class? Okay, now let us go, class. Let us go. I shouldn't have come this way because this is the reason why most times, most of the things we teach you in chemistry, we don't prove it. We just give you how it is. Are you following me now? Okay, let us go. So this is H. This is OH. This is plus. This is minus. Take me. Let's go. Class, let's go. So therefore, this one will combine with who? Being plus, combined with what? OH. Class, are we together? And they are going to be having NEH to CROH, COOH. Plus, this one will come out with H. You have H2, and yes or yes, 2 now. Into CROH, COOH. Class, please don't confuse yourself here. Forget about this uh, spirituality that I'm doing here. You know, say now OH from here, copy H from here, Abby. Or you return it back. OH should go back to this, H should go back to this. We have this. Have you seen what hydrolysis gives to give back the amino acids? Class, are we clear? Which one? Yes, you can also write as NEH2, but this is the correct way to write it. You know, I do write it as NEH2 now. Look at it. I write it as NEH2. We do write it as NEH2, but this is the correct way. Because hydrogen cannot combine with nitrogen and combine with carbon. It is monovalent. Are we together? You're welcome. Elijah, today is Friday, Abby. Yeah. Welcome. Are we there? Serious business. Did you understand this? Thank you very much. So we now go to the next one. Test for proteins. Tests. Somebody. Oh, sorry. Eh? 
Yes, write the question. That's hydrolysis of what? Proteins. Kaka, kaka, kaka. Sorry. Is there any protein with only two amino acids? There cannot be. Proteins with only two amino acids, there cannot be. So thank God this example we are giving you. It's example. Are we good? <laughs> The next, I know you. I know you. I do not hear you. The next, the next thing we are doing, Abby, is tests. Tests. Can I rub off now? But John will never test you on this technicality. So he's only supposed to me we'll be talking about this technicality. I am free to give you this technicality. So no problem, I'll power me. Sorry. I will not give you this technicality in the young class. Are you following me? Sulia. Come on, Robert. Now, finally, how do we test for proteins? There are four tests for proteins. I will tell you about the Buret test. This, I will tell you about the Milan's test. Me, me, we also tell you Xanthoprotein test. And finally, I will tell you about Nihindrin test. Nihindrin region. Jam will test you on this test. Eh? I don't hear you. You did it in secondary school? Yes. No. Put it on bread. Now, start your testing for. Start your testing for. The rest, all of them like this. These two, you see these two here? We are using reagents. These two. <laughs> eh? Ninhindrin. <laughs> yes. Next slide. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so that I need to collect my money complete. So if I do any guys was <laughs> now okay. What is Bure test? Buret test. Protein gives violet. Please, is violet? Mm. Is violet? Is always violet. Sometimes it will be light purple. But test will always test you on violet. Sometimes they test you on purple too. Are you getting me now? In, in, in some jam question, they will write violet. In some, they will write purple. Don't be confused. I don't know why they are calling it violet, but my spirit is telling me that light purple is called violet. I don't know. Are you, are you, eh? Are we good? Yes. Are we together? It will give violet or purple color with sodium hydroxide and copper sulfate it will give violet coloration violet color with sodium hydroxide and what copper sulfate copper tetraoxysulfate please the old name of this the old name of this is copper sulfate 
They are your pack name is Copa Tetra Ozo Sulfate 6. In case you see that in the past question, Jam will test you on this one. Jam test more on this one than any other one. In fact, this one many for Jam question. Class, are we together? You see, are you following me now? You see, copper is a transition element. You remember they used to form complex. Do you remember I told you? Complex seance, Abi. See, I shall. They will now go and form. Oh, sorry. They will now go and form complex with the with the nitrogen of the amino acid of the protein. Are you following me now? They now go and form complex with it. That complex we have this color. Remember that complex ions are usually colored. Are you getting it now? But the only thing that will make them form this complex is in the presence of what a base sodium hydroxide. Class, are we together? Take note of that. That is the test. Number two. Is Milan reagent. Number two is Milan's test. Milan's test. What will happen here? Hello, somebody. Here, protein will give us two colors. First one is melon color. What is the color of melon? White. Melon. Egusi. So you guys don't know that melon is online. What are the two of them are together? The first color it will give you is melon color. Then finally, it will not give you water melon color. Yeah, it will give you all melon color. Are you following me? Now, nah, class, follow me. First color is what? Melon color. Shabby. The second color is that of water melon. Clear? What's melon water melon color? Red. Somebody say green. You are spoiling. Eh? Watermelon. That you are licking. Wait. If I tell you water, milk on a wait. On a two like, I don't know why you are falling in love with other things in watermelon. What do you like in watermelon? <laughs> The part you enjoy, yeah? Is it not so? The part you enjoy, right? That's it. What, what is the color of that part? That's the way Okay. <laughs> Protein gives first white color that turns red. Watermelon color. Are you following me now? With millions of agents. So once you hear melon color white, that will turn water melon color red. You should know it is what melon's test. Is it clear to us, class? So one, sorry, you should know it is protein, protein present. Now, sometimes, what is melon reagent? Melon's reagent is two things: nitric concentrated nitric acid and mercury. Mercury is Hg Hajagoro. Combination of mercury and conk nitric acid is what? Can I rub off class? I hope you are getting it. Anybody who did not get it? Claire B. We still have two more tests to go. Make one fast. Fast, fast, fast. Stop, stop, stop. When, once you add one or two drops of the million reagent to the sample of that proteinous food, are you following me now? That has been boiled. No, it's a liquid now. They are all liquid. In fact, it's a reagent that they have prepared. You are going to buy it as melon reagent. Are you getting me now? Uh -huh. Just add a drop of it. First of all, it will turn white. And then, thereafter, it turns red. Is it clear? Routine is confirmed. Are we good? Okay, the next one is xanthoprotein test. Xanthoprotein. Xanthoprotein. Look, I'm not class. I'm not sure I got you. I'm 
Ana na class kan bashi a gazu duka. Now the next one is number 3. Next one is xanthoprotein. Xanthoprotein. Yes, are you following me now? Uh -huh. thank you. Second me now. Sorry. Let's continue. Are we together? Yeah. Now this one is yellow color. Yellow coloration. Sorry. Protein gives yellow color with concentrated nitric acid. That is to say, I am not using a melons reagent. A melons reagent. Are you following me now? So it will not give me. Are you getting me? I'm only using one part of the melon reagent, which is the what? The nitric acid. Are you getting me now? So it will give me the color of the outer part of melon. What's the color of the outer part of the melon? Yellow. Yellow coloration. Yes. Yes, once you put concentrated sulfuric acid on the protein. Eh? No, 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 no. You have to have cooked it first so that you can be able to make a slurry from it. That they dissolve it in water and stir so that it will have been a slurry. Yes, there will be yellow coloration produced. Once that yellow coloration is produced, you know that this is a protein. Nitric acid. Yes, now, this is, protein will give you this color if you add concentrated nitric acid. In fact, you are not getting it. With the addition of conch nitric acid. That's what you're going to be having there. Class, are we together? Are you clear now? The last test is nin, nin. Hindrin test. This one is also a reagent. Now, protein will give the same thing here. It will give either blue or yellow color. Anyone? Yellow color. When, allow me to rub off this place for clarity and lucidity and translucency. When, nin hindrin reagent is added protein will give you blue or yellow color there will be a color change in fact once you add this reagent there will be a color change are you getting me now yes or yellow but are you following me is it clear to you the moment you just hear xanto sorry the moment you just hear conch nitric acid to a protein you should know that it is protein test or you hear um, Milan's reagent. Or you hear Nihindri reagent. You should know it is what? Protein. Nihindri reagent is in den, in den 1, 2, 3, trione. In den 1, 2, 3, trione. Are you following me, Baba? You are welcome. Early record. Eh? Now, in vain. Now, what are polymers? Please follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. Try own. Please be fast. Now, let's go. What are polymers? Are we there? Yeah. What reagent we use? No. The concentration of the protein sample or the amino acid in question will only affect the deepness, the intensity of the color produced. Are you clear? Now, what are polymers actually, my fellow chemists? What are polymers? The definitions you have as polymers 
is not the actual meaning of polymer. When you get to the higher institution, you'll be tested, or sorry, you'll be told or given the actual meaning of polymer. Polymer is, are you following me now? Polymer is a collection or a combination of macromolecules. Of macromolecules. The definition you have in, in your textbooks is a definition of macromolecule. You are scammed, highly scammed. All right, let us go. Polymers are complex compound formed. Are you getting me now? Complex compound formed from large number of monomers. Form from the combination, sorry, from the combination. Form from the combination. There should be a carrot sign here, please. From the combination of large number of what? Monomers. Monomers, okay. Monomers are the smaller molecules. Are smaller molecule units. Are smaller molecule units. You know, the smallest molecular unit. Are you following me now? Molecular unit. Smallest molecular unit of a polymer. Let me give you an example so that you understand what I'm saying. When a team combine in large number, when a team, I'm going to use as many a team as I can use here. When a team combine in large number, you are going to be having a polymer called polyethene. Are you following me now? Those ethene are the smaller molecule units of that polymer. Look at it. This is your ethene. Yes or yes? CH2. H2. Yes or yes, class? All right, God bless you. Now let me combine ethene here now. You're going to be having CH. Gossiping is reality. CH2. This is an 18, is it not so? Now, the double one that's supposed to be here is extended like this. It will combine with another 18. CH2, CH2, like this. Yes or yes? This will combine with another 18. CH2, CH2. So that means this 18 you are seeing here will first of all spread this double bond across the two sides like this, like this. Class, you understand? Yes. God bless you. And then they begin to combine with themselves in chains. Then you have CH2, 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 CH2. These are as many as I, can, as I can put there. Are you following me now? Now, these are the individual molecules. These are the, yes or yes? These are the, are we good? These are the smaller molecules, the 18, that combine in large number to give you this pool, the 18 you have in here. Yes or yes? They are the monomers. Class, is it clear to you? As a whole, it's now called the polymer. You said? Yes, the polymer there is called polyethene because the monomers are ethene. Are we clear? Any confusion? You all get it now. Okay. Have you understand what polymer is? But take note that this complex molecule here is what I call what? Polymer B. The process by which monomers combine to form polymers is called polymerization. Polymerization is the process by which Monomers combine to form polymer. <laughs> There's more to that. <laughs> there are different processes that this can be achieved. There are different processes of polymerization. Eh? Lylon. Class, listen. You see that polymer we make at the end of this now? Those polymers we are going to make from this process. 
from the monomers. Are you getting me now? That polymer, we will now take it to the industry, melt it. When it is melted to become a liquid, we use different techniques to convert them to substances, solids of different shapes. Solids of form from processing a polymer is called what? Plastic. It's called what? So your nylon is one of them. Your, <laughs> your plastic cups. We have different types of plastic. We shall discuss them alongside here. Class, are we together? All right, let us go. Now, let's talk about... Let me quickly tell you addition and condensation polymerization. Can I rub off? I was here since morning. Since morning. I'm going to do this. Hello. Hello, I can hear you, sir. I'll be there. I'll be there. Listen to my level. Sir, I can hear you, sir. No, I'm not on the way. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll, by 11, I will leave where I am. I'm in the class already. I don't like all this kind of thing. Sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> now, rubber is an example of polymer. Example of polymer is rubber. Have you written that class? Example of polymer is rubber. Have you written it? Now let's talk about types of rubber. No rubber band though. How many of you have seen back of three? If you go to the forest, there is back of three, they will put plate on, on, they will tie plates to it and the liquid is dripping inside it. That liquid is containing rubber in it. That liquid is a combination of rubber. You know rubber? Dissolved in a liquid. So, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Eh? The, li the name. In we normally call it latex. Yes. We normally call it latex. That's the name of that solution. Not from any tree. Only rubber trees. Only rubber plants. Are you following it now? Very simple. What we will now do is this. And I know they hear me again. Though. We will just, that liquid you see, we will just precipitate the rubber out of it by adding acetic acid, ethanol acid. The solid rubber will precipitate out and then we can process it. Sometimes the rubber will be too soft for us. We will make it hard. I will tell you how we harden the rubber when it is too soft. Eh? Acetic acid or ethanol acid. Can we continue now? Are you clear? Now if the rubber is too soft, we will harden it. I will tell you how we harden it. Hardening of that rubber is called vulcanization. It's called what? Oh, yeah, very good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for reminding me. Hey, Jesus. There are two types of rubber. Natural rubber and arty, sorry, synthetic. Are we good? Now, let me tell you the monomer that is used in making... You know, I told natural rubber is a polymer, B. Now, let me tell you the monomer we use in making natural rubber. Cosile. Somebody say Cosile. It is isoprene. Isoprene is the old name. Somebody say isoprene. I'm not talking about drug here. Yeah. For those of you that are thinking it's abortion drug. I'm sorry. <laughs> Some of you. <laughs> come, 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 let me, let me tell you, yeah. are we good? What is isoprene? Isoprene is two methyl boots, boots, one, three, diene, I've told you before, boots, one, three, diene, are you getting me now? Are you following me at all? Yes. <laughs> Class, let's go, let's go. Are we together? Are we together? Together? 
Oh, 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 oh. No, 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 no. This one, we use chloro, chloroprene. I didn't say chloroquine, no. I didn't say chloroquine. <laughs> no, it's <a> syrup. <laughs> it's not tablet, it's syrup. <laughs> you say I should be serious. Let's continue. <laughs> Ask my brother there. He knows it better. Chloroquine is alternative to post no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go and make a sauce. Go and ask chemist. Let's continue. Which one? Chloroprene. You guys are interested in this chloroprene. It's not chloroquine. No. Chloroquine is a malaria drug. Anti malaria drug. See, chloropine, <laughs> chloropine <laughs> is the isomer of this. If I put chlorine here now, that becomes chloroprene. That becomes chloro what? See their faces. Together, class. Chloroprene, chloroprene, chloroprene. Isoprene, that is two methyl but one three diene. But if I remove, are you getting me now? Ah, no, never getting me. No worry. Just listen to me, listen to me. This one is two chloro. But one three diene. But one three diene. Please add the e here. Are you following it? When you get them, draw the structure assignment. Draw this. You can draw it now from the name. That's all you use. If I am using chloroprene, then the synthetic rubber here will also be called neoprene. Don't let jam confuse you. No, natural rubber will not get name. No, natural. Now the synthetic now will give name neoprene because I'm making it from chloroprene. Is it clear? There's more to this. The details of this I will not be discussing in this class for the sake of um, efficiency and efficacy and actually the scope of the class. I am done telling you about natural and synthetic rubber. Are you clear? Class, John will test you on this. Show. You know, John will test you on this. Show. Eh? Example of isoprene. Siam. You see that natural rubber where they collect from three? This is the monomer unit that make it up. That was combined in a large number to give you that, uh, what's it called, rubber. Is it clear to you now? But if we want to synthesize rubber, in the lab, we will use two chlorobutuantridiene, polymerize it. It will give us rubber. The rubber we will get here when we polymerize this. Are you getting me now? We will call synthetic rubber or neoprene. Sir, yes? Um, sulfur. Sulfur. Like yes. yes. Sulfur. Not, sorry, sulfur does not smell like matches. It is sulfur. For, who is saying yes? I don't know why Pepe is. I don't know what you are feeling there. What is happening to her? <laughs> so for four hours, it has mushy smell. Okay, yes. That smell you're hearing is a result of the gas coming out. Are you following me now? That gas coming out is larger than, welcome, my dear. It's larger than air molecules. It's larger than what? Air molecules, but it's small enough for it. You cannot see it. You can that. Are you getting me now? That is the smoke you are seeing. X-Men, not X-Men, rotten X-Men, rotten, rotten X-Men, hydrogen sulfide. It is not that it has rotten X-Men, but because the amino, oh, sorry, the amino acids that make up the proteins of that air contain sulfur, like methionine and, are you getting me, and cysteine, are you getting me, on the light. Sorry, let's continue, let's continue, let's continue. Class, are you clear about this? Is this settled? Polymerize this. If I combine this in large number, if I combine this monomer in large number, I'm going to be obtaining polyvinyl chloride. Class, the, let me tell you the secret behind polymerization. In polymerization, in polymerization, are you following me now? The whatever you are using as monomer must have terminal double bond. If it is bond in question, it must have what class? Yeah. When I have
Class, this is the same thing as ethene. Oh. In ethene, I just remove one of the hydrogen here and put what CH3. So just take this thing up, just like I did here. Class, are you following it? Yeah. I have produced the polymer for me. That will be pro polypropylene or polypropene. The polymer. Produce the polymer from this monomer. Produce it now. You cannot. Polymer from this. Look at what I did here now. I've done two already. Yes. Which one? This one. Now me just put the bracket here. This is the polymer. Polyvinyl chloride. Poly PVC. Polyvinyl chloride. About the difference between them because Jan will not test on that. I'm just explaining for you to understand. What type of polymer are you for me here? Addition polymerization when it is bombed. Yes. Yes. Oh God. Is it this one you are doing? This one. Now watch, look at it. This is repeating unit I've generated here, is it not so? God bless you. Now begin to just continue to repeat this. That would be like this. This CH2. CH into CN. Continue. Continue with this. CH2. CH. CN. Continue with it. CH2. CH. CN. Continue like that. Until you don't tire. That's the polymer. Yes. Which one? That's the propene, Abby. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what I wanted you to do. This is it. CH3. CH double bonded to CH2. Why are you doing it? Draw the polymer from it. You have done it. Where is it? <laughs> yeah, correct. Very wrong. It's not just wrong, it's extremely wrong. It's, you know, there are some wrong that are raised to the power two. Your own is raised to the power four. Your own wrong is raised to the power four. <laughs> now, watch. It is between, look at me, it is between these two carbon, these two carbon here. That I am stretching the double bond. It is these two carbon that will be having the two bond. These two carbon that are having this cellular. They are not that Is it clear to you? Yeah. This is it. Now, what, the one I just given us is it CH3 into CH double bond to CH2. Between these two carbon, there is a double bond. That means you need to take your CH3 up. You need to take your CH3 up so that there will be space to stretch the double bond between these two carbon. So you do it to any number you like, and that is the polymer, polypropylene. Yes. No, no, the year word. I see that students don't hear word. That's because I'll be doing another thing. You will be doing another thing. You are to stretch the double bond between the two carbon. We carry the double. Uh -huh. Did you see me stretch this one like this here? Mm -hmm. Can you do it like this? CH3 like this. That means the double bond they are stretching is between this carbon and the other carbon, which is wrong. I didn't hear you. I thought this CH2. No, it, it is not there. And it should not be there because if you put it here, CH3. Are you following me now? Then this carbon is carrying five bond. One, two, three, four, five. Two hydrogen. Wrong. 
you have to do it the way the structure is. Yeah, somebody say, can we put this CH3 down after the years? No. That's what she said, please. Are we good, class? Any problem? Another one? Yes. Ah, some people are recording me. Why is all this thing like this? You guys know that I'm shy online. I'm shy to come back. Okay. okay. What if, what if you are having CH3, C, this one is polyvicinic chloride. This, sorry, this is vicinin chloride. Did I say vicinin? Thank God that you guys are good. If not, you should have flogged me. It's allylic chloride I wanted to talk about. Yeah. It's not allylic. I'm just saying. Yeah? One, two, three, four. No, leave it. This is not a yes. Well, have you done this one? Is it this one you did? Yes. Talk to me now. Is it this one you did? Yes. Okay. Fast, 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 so that we can leave this one. Eh, now you are talking. Eh, eh. Now you have just produced a kind of a syntactic polymer structure. Yeah, that is syntactic polymer structure. Sorry, isotactic polymer structure. Something like this. Uh-huh. Exactly. Nobody's even producing syntactic polymer structure. Uh-huh. Now you're getting it. Uh-huh. 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 Now you're talking. Uh-huh. So, are we good now, class? Now, the next one I'll be giving you is when... This one, you mean you have not gotten it? You have to see me private in my office. So, since I can... okay, but if you know you have not, I'm not sure you got it. Just see me in my office. My spirit is telling me you did not get it. This is what you have actually. Yes or yes? Abi? Yes. Hannah, <laughs> then stretch the double bond between these two here and continue to add it. So, the next one I add now is what? CH, CACH3 to what? CACL. So, this becomes my repeating unit. Sorry, man. Are we good? Now, I haven't gotten this so far. What about addition polymerization? A small molecule is formed. Let me give you an example. Example is on nylon 66. No, no, that would be too complex. But that one involved, yes, hexamethylendiamine and adipic acid. So let me try and use another diamine instead of that. Are we together? Yeah. Are we together? Let us go class. This one involves, sorry, condensation polymerization. Involve bifunctional group. That is two functional group in the same molecule. By two functional group in the same molecule. To see. Are you following me at all? Let me give you an example. You have CH2, CH2, and then the third one would be an amine. Here yeah, will be an amine. Are you getting me now? Yes, this is one of the monomers. The other monomer will contain COOH, CH2, CH2, COOH. Class, are you following me now? Uh -huh. It has to be two functional groups. So that when these two combine with this one, there will be another functional group to combine with another one. There will be another functional group to combine with another one like that. Are you getting it now? You're not getting it? Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Now let me just, just listen. You will get it. You understand. Are you following me? Let me tell you how these two will combine here. You know how this two is going to We have done it. So to give you what? Water. Yes or yes? Are you following me? That water, we don't need it. So that means H from here will also go. Abby? Yes. So you now have any H remaining. Put a bond there when that H goes. Are you following it? CH2. CH2, this one has gone to give you this. Yes or yes, class? Yes. H has gone here. OH has gone here. 
remaining CH2, CH2, CO. Please remove the OH from here. Assuming it is combined with Adam and put a dash. Class, you get what I did. Hey, now this will be your repeating units. Can you see it? So these two has combined to give me this, which should be a repeating unit. Any confusion? No, 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 no. It's the next one I'll put now. The next one of this one that I'll put now will combine with this one here. Yes. You see OH. It will combine with the NH2 of this one that I'll combine with it next. Are you getting it now? Uh, by the time it combines with it like that, if you have an NH2 ending it, then I'll combine it again with this one. Are you following it now? That's how it will be going. So you don't need to bother yourself. Just note this. Are you following it now? No, you will not be asked this one. I just stress myself here. So just understand, this is the polymer you are going to have here, together with what? Sorry. Together with what? Water. Yes or yes? So that water is the small molecule that comes and that's why it is called condensation polymerization. So if you add the polymer back, so if you add the water back, they will dissociate to give you back this polymer. Is it clear? Yeah. That's condensation polymerization for you. Did that give you an example of condensation polymerization? No. Let me give you examples. Yeah. Examples. No, I want to give you compounds, common compounds. Like that. Nylon. I think in the CH2 here is up to six. And the CH2 here, in the case of this one, is up to six. Did I say six now? Yeah. Thank God you guys are nice and not slap me. So, will you shut up? If the CH2 here are up to four in number, are you following me now? So that plus this will give you six. Then in that case, four here plus this will give you six. And then this CH2 here are up to six in number. Then this will be called adipic acid. This is this one will now be called um, hexamethylendiamine. Two of them together will now give you what nylon. Is it clear to you? God bless you. Another example is your protein. Protein. Carbohydrates. Like starch. Sorry. Starch. Polysaccharide. I mean. ETC. All these are condensation polymers. Are we clear? When I was combining glucose together, they were forming water. Yes or yes? Which any any means any number you like, you put it there. Are you getting me now? That means I can call. Are you following me now? The same thing we did that time. This is what you'll be repeating. Are you following it now? Mm -hmm. You just repeat. I have NH2, CH2, CH2, NH to CO to CH2 to CH2 to CO. You can need to repeat it like that. That will be the polymer. Any higher like. Are we clear? All right, I will give you examples of addition and condensation polymers. Let me now discuss plastics with you finally. Are we good? Now, when we are, we are, we are, once it is two, plastic. Plus any solid. Are you getting me now? Of a particular shape that I, pro I produce from processing polymer. Are you getting me now? It's called a plastic. There are different techniques of processing. We have the molding technique, the bluffing molding, extrusion molding technique. We have, we have various techniques. So if, you, if, you, eh? if you mention the polymer to you now, we tell you the technique is in making it. There are various techniques we use in making various forms of plastics. Are we together? Are you following? Me? Okay, let us go now. There are two types of plastic. Uh, let me sorry, let me define it. Solid shaped objects. Solid shaped objects made from processed from processing polymer. Solid shaped object that is made from processing what? Polymer. Are we good? There are two types of plastic. We have thermoplastic and we have thermosets. 
plastik. Yes. You see thermoplastic. Are you following me now? They do not undergo reaction. They do not undergo reaction. Do not undergo reaction. That is to say, I need to define reaction in a different way for you. There's a de there is a technical definition of reaction that you are not given in inorganic chemistry. That is to say, no new bond form. Do not undergo chemical reaction when heated. Since there is no new bond form when heated, are you getting me now? As they have melted like that, if they solidify, you can heat them again, they will melt. Are you getting me? Yes, yeah, the normal plastics you have here, like your nylon. It's a nylon, it's a thermoplastic because once it is heated and it hardens, you can heat it again, it will melt again. The reason why to continue to do that is because no new bond will be formed when you heat it first. Are you following me? But when a new bond is formed when heated, it simply means that you cannot heat it again to melt. Because the heat you apply now cannot break that bond. Are you getting it now? That is thermosets. They become permanently hard when heated. So heat will make them to the what? Harden or set. Are we good, class? Any confusion? Okay. Example, nylon. The nylon, the rubbers. Sorry, nylon. Vulcanized rubber. What about thermosets? What about thermosets? On that goes chemical reaction. That's a new bond is formed when heated. That new bond form is called crossling bond. Yes. Yes, now. What will you do? What will you do for a substance to become plastic? For a substance to be elastic means it can return to... Let me take rubber band as an example. Rubber band, if you stretch it, it will come back to its original form. Yes or yes? God bless you. That means that with stretching, it will be what? Elastic. Meaning with stretch, it will come back to the original form. But if I heat rubber, can it come back to the original form? No, it will continue to flow. It cannot return back to the original form. So it has become what? Plastic. Plastic means it's not to return back to the original form. Are we good? And there are some... Leave it. No, no, no. You can't make it elastic anymore. You have destroyed... You have, you have spoiled the show. Now you cause the quarrel. Are you getting me now? E.G. is your rubber. Vulcanized rubber, sorry, vulcanized rubber. Now, allow me to explain vulcanization of rubber here now because Jan will test you on it. Allow me to explain vulcanization of rubber now. Jan will test you on it. Vulcanization of rubber means, oh, if I slap somebody. Vulcanization of rubber means. Thank you. That is a confusing person. Means heating rubber with sulfur to harden the rubber. With sulfur to harden the rubber. Are we clear? Are we good? By cross linking. Okay. This is all about organic chemistry. Now, when I come back, are we good? In, an, in fact, in our next class, we're going to solve. We're going to solve all the questions in organic chemistry. That's it all now. Everything we will just sit down and solve it throughout. Are you following me now? That will be grand finale. You don't die. What? So you see, the only thing I've done doing is from what I've given you before in the notes when I was teaching you this, this will not be this. This will not be this. Are you following me? 
Meaning that blessed are thou if thou hast understood that follow me. But woe unto minus nineteen ninety six. Even if you have twenty twenty three, which is start today. <laughs> yeah. Hello, class. Can we go together? Yes. So I didn't rubber, just stop there. Can we go class? Hello. Somebody say what is the difference between rubber and plastic? Rubber is elastic. Rubber can return back to the original form when deformed. But plastics do not return back. However, rubber can be made or plasticized by heating. Why? Because it is a, what? a thermoplastic. Are you clear? Yes? Yes. Probably. Are we good?